been thinking about how, in some ways, city life is underrated. Like, I think people think of it as, like, dirty, and mm. the ideal is to live this, like, idyllic country lifestyle, or rural lifestyle. I grew up a little bit loving nature, and kind of my parents always taking mm -hmm. me out to enjoy certain things. And so a part of me, I think, always has this American ideal of you can have your country estate that's just yours. But the fact is, is that to have all of that for just yourself, it requires a lot of resources. So the reason why I've started to appreciate cities is because you can save on a lot of things, mm -hmm. because you can share. It's kind of this idea of, of public property. You would sacrifice to be in a city, or do you actually think that maybe you gain some things too? It's a trade-off. It's not mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. much of a sacrifice as it is a trade-off, because you don't get to have nature, but you get to have art. Theaters, operas, you get to you have get to community. You have to drive a car because you can actually take a train. You know, you cannot have a lot of things that, you know, you would have to spend money or time on if you lived a different life. People talk a lot about how, you know, back in the day, take like Charlemagne, for instance, the highest, most, you know, political figure, everything. And we all live much better lives in a lot of different ways than he did. And cities, I feel like, take it another step because it's sort of like everybody can have a slice of the good life. Sometimes. One night a month you can go out to the theater or listen to an opera or, or access to a beautiful park. Whatever it is, and it's almost like you're the nobility, but you only get a little bit of it because we all share it. I know, I do think it's interesting because I think like the American dream that I saw growing up, it wasn't living in a city. Do you think that can change? I think in the younger generation, people have started to see what the advantages of the city living are. When I was growing up near New York City, it was considered pretty dangerous. And you know, something like Times Square and 42nd Street, that was like, my parents essentially forbid me to go there because it was all sex shops and prostitutes and people who would mug you. Now, when it's become time for my generation to actually live in New York City, it's considered one of the best places in the world because a lot of different types of restaurants, a lot of museums you can go to. I think a lot of my friends have started to value things like that more than they can somewhat consider moving back to Long Island, like moving to prison because you're, I mean, you'd be trapped in your own house. You have to specifically get some person to agree to make a plan with you, drive there, figure out how to drive home just to do anything. Whereas New York City is like the exact opposite. It's mm -hmm. kind of, there's people all around and you can always find something to do and kind of, you don't need a car to get there. You don't need to think about how you're gonna get home. For me, like I come from a small 50,000 people city in Poland, but the dream of people that I grew up with was to move to Warsaw or Krakow or Poznań which are big cities, but you would not be thinking about getting a huge house with a huge lawn. We kind of look at it in Europe and we're like, really? Like, is that is that like what, what you want? Because it, it's kind of like a lot of isolation, I suppose, too. My brother actually made a point that, that Barcelona is probably one of the perfect size cities for yeah. sustainability yeah, yeah, and for community. Bit. You know, I think sustainability because you don't have to have elevators everywhere and, and there's community, like you're saying. I even find the idea of apartments interesting because I think like in the U.S. we're just not used to living in apartments unless you're from New York. My sister lives in, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, small, small town, and they're building a green high rise, you know, but it's kind of luxury. It's they're not going to be cheap and it is going to be the highest thing in town, the most dense thing. I and mean, that's like played off as like a good thing. They're gonna have a lot of shared services. There's gonna be also organic stores down below and all this stuff. It's hard to say which comes first, like the urbanism or the other values, but like mm -hmm. nutrition. So people have started to think about, I wanna eat healthy, that means fresh stuff. So where am I gonna get this? It's super convenient if you can yeah. go downstairs in your own building or right across the street and there's a baker with fresh bread and kind of fresh vegetables and fresh fruits, fresh fish, and kind of it's all there. That's only enabled because it's a city. In the suburbs, you'd have to get into your car and drive to one, then drive to another, and drive to the third. It's kind of funny because I guess suburbia, in the past, I guess it had this, well, you're out in nature, you can actually enjoy things, and sort of that's the healthier lifestyle. And it's become the exact opposite these days, where in fact, if you look at it, it's the urban people who are healthier because they walk something like, I forget the exact stat, but you know, three miles a day on average, urban people, where suburban people who walk out into their garage, get in their car, even to go get their mail and back like my neighbor or whatever it is, end up walking, you know, less than a half a mile a day. Add that up over a month or a year or several years. And 
actually the people in cities end up living a lot more healthy of a lifestyle. Yeah, maybe the air quality is slightly less or whatever it is, but they're kind of more fit, don't suffer cardiac issues or anything like that nearly as much. I think that biking is becoming a huge thing and there's so many changes in recent years. Like, I was just so pleasantly surprised when Paris introduced its Velib system and there's one here in Barcelona. It's just amazing because you can see business people in their suits, with their ties, on their bikes, going to work and back. And and how great is that? Like, I mean, you know, if you live in, in Long Island and are trying to get to, to your job in, in Manhattan, like, good luck if you want to bike that. <laughs> I would bet, actually, that in, t in, in 10 or 20 years that changes. Because I've noticed mm -hmm. a, a trend of, especially, like, office type, like, consulting firms or banks or whatever, have started to put showers in their offices. I've noticed a lot of people, even who live, like, 10 miles outside the city, they'll bike in and mm -hmm. out every day. I was reading about how there's a difference between the outer core suburbs and the inner core suburbs. It's like a grayscale, right? Mm. Big urban identities have mm -hmm. different realities. If you live in the very core, you can afford what we do, mm -hmm. which is to walk to the cinema we want, to mm -hmm. walk to the best grocery mm -hmm. store if we want. But if you live in other parts of the belt, in the outer parts, these people need to take in consideration other things mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Train can work for them, maybe not the metro bus can work probably they're not going to have the public sharing of bikes they probably will need to have the car at least to go from the house to the train station i mean obviously so much depends on just how you choose to live even if you're living way out in the country i think things are just a lot easier when you're in cities to live sustainably the reason the cities are so interesting is that way is they force people to make a decision because space is at a premium of do i really want that bigger more inefficient whatever you know, out in the suburbs, they never think to themselves, oh my God, I'm gonna have to pay a lot of money to park this car and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to go down these streets and stuff. But in cities, you do have to think that. And so all these people are forced to make these decisions. Mm -hmm.